was, that was the, to this day, that still is. <laughs> That was actually the first time I ever got my kids to think that I was even vaguely cool. Was my son Mike would have been about five years old, and uh, his dad knew Kevin Eastman, who created the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And uh, I would go off to America for big important meetings, and I would the biggest and most important thing that I could ever do was go and raid the the uh, Mirage Studios toy world, right? And I'd come home with turtle toys. And suddenly it was like, yeah, my dad. I still have a box of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle cookies that I haven't opened. <laughs> you know, if you eat them now, they will give you strange powers. <laughs> the box is billowing out. I think something's growing inside. <laughs> but where a fist punches through. So, when we, 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 we were talking before we went on stage about how scary this bit of it is, and how not scary really getting up in front of an audience and talking about creativity is, as opposed to sitting with a blank screen in front of you and no ideas and no idea of what you're going to do next. I. You know, when, when it's just me, um, I, I have a story, I have whatever it is I'm going to write, I, I'm just sort of off on my own. Um, how does it work with that, with a, with a room full of writers? Do you begin by kicking off an idea? Do you bring an idea to the table? Well, the, first of all, the, the difference of doing a TV series is, uh, I've, always, I've told you before, it's, it's like uh, running down a tunnel for nine months with a train behind you. You can't stop. There's large economic forces behind you that make you keep going. And, um, and um, but then when you're actually sitting in the room with other writers, um, you, you're constantly asking the question: What if? You know, what if? You know, what if this happened? What if? You know, what if this character? You know, if the relationship ends, how do they deal with the relationship ending? You know, what kind of actions does the character take? When they're bereft, or you know, you can you can easily start talking about stories using the seven deadly sins. You know, I mean, those are universal issues, and you know, greed, gluttony, lust, happiness, whatever. You know, the different. I, I can't name them, but you know, like sloth. Yes. Um, the, if the characters are really have any reality to them whatsoever, they have flaws, and those flaws and their ability to deal with those flaws, or their ability to deal with obstacles, that's a story. And a sitcom is so intimate, it is by and large, more often not two people talking on a couch. And so the story is not in great big physical moves, it's in dialogue, and, um, and it's in reaction. And, um, and a lot of time is spent sitting in a room failing at coming up with a story. Terrible feeling, and I, and I think that's the whole thing of writing: is when you feel terrible, not quitting. Mm -hmm. It's probably writing in a nutshell. It's, I hate this. I hate everyone in this room that's here with me. We we stink. We should call CBS and tell them we're done. Okay, let's keep going. <laughs> All right, you know, um, let's maybe pretend to go to the bathroom just to walk out and walk in and create some motion, but don't quit. Do you find that the, the limitations, though, are also wonderful ways to create off of? I mean, the fact that you have, whatever it is, 22 minutes, 22 minutes? 22. 22 minutes. That's 8 minutes. You have, <laughs> you have however many sets you have, two, three sets. Um, you have your core group of actors who are all going to have to be used, and they're all going to have to have some screen time, or probably all unless one of them is off with a broken leg. Um, now, if they have a broken leg, you shoot them behind the couch. Right. <laughs> we did have to see the big bang with Kelly Cuoco standing behind furniture after she fell off her horse. So. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, there's a train behind you, you just keep running. Which I guess is kind of...
kind of what I'm saying. Suddenly at that point you're going, well, it has to be an episode with chairs. <laughs> yes. There's or large that. objects. Yeah. She's tending bar in this episode, strangely enough. Exactly. The bar is about this high. So, do those, do, does that, do the limitations give you... I used to push against them and I would, I would, I would, I found them to be limitations early on in my career. And then at a certain point I, I realized that they're actually opportunities. It took me, I hate to say it, maybe 20 years to come to understand the beauty of it, because it's like a haiku. It's, yes, whatever you might want to say about a sitcom or you know, the genre being a you know, mongrel genre or whatever, it's, it's a little bit of theater. It's a couple of people talking in a kitchen, in a living room, in a bedroom. And the very limitations of it can be beautiful. You know, I, I, I always like to talk about, I was a huge fan of in more recent times, uh, everybody loves Raymond. Phil Rosenthal wrote these beautiful little plays, and there'd be 20 pages of material of two people in the living room, and then 20 pages of two people talking in the bedroom, and it was fascinating, it was funny, and it was real, and, and it was inspiring. Because there were no bells and whistles, there was no editing tricks, there's no music that's going to cover the silence of the silence is a play, a silence. And, uh, it's, uh, that's a great thing to accomplish if you can pull that off. It's, uh, you know, it's, uh, when it works, it's fantastic. When it doesn't work, you have a group of people sitting there quietly watching you. And you can hear your career going by. <laughs> <laughs> I remember Richard.